Before we conclude this healing conversation, I'd like to take you to the desert at Joshua Tree, California, where I first met Brian and his partner, Melissa, at Contact in the Desert, where they were exhibiting their Ascension Chamber. Their intention is to share this with the world. Hello and welcome to another Healing Conversation. I'm Loren Gailey with AcousticHealth.com and I'm here with Brian Besco of Twisted Sage Studios. We are talking about raising the vibrations of the planet. Uh, yes, that's right. Not only on a personal level, but everything that we are doing on a personal level is affecting us out there in a multidimensional aspect. Um, all the stuff that we've been doing for the past year for the healing work has been with all of our multidimensional soul selves, so all of our soul aspects. And uh, so they affect us so much, and is, so does all the soul contracts that we're dealing with, uh, the soul contracts that we've had for lifetimes, uh, which includes entities that uh, ride with us and reside with us throughout many lifetimes. And so, um, and the Merkaba activation is another part of this whole integral process of ascension and of raising vibrations. Uh, so basically, we're just trying to clean the slate for everybody to be able to uh, follow their free will to uh, make a home, so to speak. Um, as we've, uh, for the past few years, we've been assisting people in activating their Merkaba fields or reactivating their fields. Um, we work with uh, various beings like Thoth and Metatron and, and our own higher soul selves. and. Um, we're just uh, doing things like uh, my partner Melissa and I have recently put out a YouTube video uh, for activating the Merkaba field and it's something where we go through and we help you release soul contracts and release entities and then your Merkaba field uh, you get to just pop that and um, it's more than just the star tetrahedron geometries it's all these other um, the 64 tetrahedron grid or Metatron's cube um, it's it's these different geometries that are allowing us to be able to travel more than just on the third dimensional level and uh, so uh, here at Contact in the Desert uh, we've been working at putting together a new chamber uh, for the past four months uh, and uh, basically this guy is doing everything that the tensor rings have traditionally been doing and that is you know the things like cutting cords um, and just raising the vibration dissolving energetic implants that are non-beneficial um, and then all of the tensor tools now that we're creating are bringing in the higher soul self and all the soul aspects so again it's synchronicity of that we're doing all this work on a multi-dimensional level um, so the chamber that we've created, uh, that Melissa and I have co-created together, it uh, utilizes the different geometries, um, like the flower of life, which is the, the partial code that we had. And um, now then that it's uh, the fruit of life, which is expanded out on that, and includes the entire code, including the new platonic solids that are making up the building blocks of the physical structure of the 5D reality that we'll be moving in. And so um, all of that fits within the framework of the fruit of life. Uh, so the fruit of life is one of the aspects that we utilize in the base of our chamber here. Um, and then Melissa and I have been doing these co-creations for oh, about four months we've been working on putting this chamber together. Um, and so some of it is, is dealing with, um, with uh, some of the aspects of like the Arcturians. They utilize uh, different uh, healing chambers for the fifth dimensional body uh, just to keep them rejuvenated for long periods of time. So basically we have this chamber that is created as all of our tools are on the etheric plane and then they are manifest into the physical. Uh, so just a couple days ago we created both, we completed both the physical and the etheric. Uh, so when you're standing within here, uh, there's 125 of these ascension rings in here that are raising the vibration of the body. They are giving the different codes for activating DNA, but then it's also working with uh, such as the Council of Light uh, to bring the light rays because uh, we work with uh, the Council of Light. Um, and that's one of the things that our tools do too, is they connect you to your immediate council of light. So that just basically means that if your higher soul self isn't part of the council or doesn't work with them already, one of its buddies does. And so they'll connect and help you run source rays through for cleaning, clearing, healing, manifesting, anything. Um, so that's part of uh, what the ascension rings are doing. And um, then the rest of it is just raising the vibrations of the person who stands within here. And um, 
It's also completing soul codes, which is a huge thing. Uh, we're seeing it as uh, these soul codes, it comes from the soul, your soul family, your star systems. And so some people have maybe just one star system, some people may have multiple star families. And basically what this means is it works with the DNA to assist in allowing you to go home after this lifetime. So basically we're trying to make these things simpler and simpler, such as doing the Merkaba activation uh, that we've put out on YouTube, uh, just to make things easy. And basically that's what this uh, machine is doing, is it is helping us to bring in all that stuff that we would have had to normally do through several reincarnations and allow us to to be complete in this lifetime. And Melissa really has an eloquent way of uh, stating some of these uh, concepts as well. Uh, she's uh, channeled in a lot of this information uh, as far as being uh, the fruit of life as being the complete key of light. Um, because when we create uh, these geometries with the light rings, these geometries are penetrating all the way into the DNA uh, with those patterns of light. I started working with copper wire and it escalated into making seeds of life and then meeting Brian. I got my Merkaba activated and it went from a seed to the fruit and then it expanded. And my understanding of the expanded version, which is the fruit of life, is it contains all five platonic solids. It contains the seed, the flower, the fruit, and the tree of life. Life as we know it from Source Creator, everything has expanded through this blueprint. So this is the blueprint of all of creation. And how this all came together uh, is synchronistic and it's not that you sit down and you receive a ton of information and then you just do that. It's you get little pieces all the time and you just follow those steps. And we've been working on this project for several months and it just came together for, for everybody here. We're hoping to get people through it and as I see it, what it is, this chamber was created etherically throughout space-time across all dimensions so that etherically the beings of light that specifically work with each and every individual will come into the chamber etherically as you step in and so you have that healing space you step into the chamber as they step into the chamber and that is how we're receiving all of our DNA codes is through all of the other beings are here to assist so all those who walk with you and all of your star family are going to come in to do all the activation that is needed. I know there will be some questions about the Merkaba and activation of the Merkaba. Is that the same as light body? Yes. Your Merkaba is your light body. And this is the star tetrahedron. And this is what all... All people who have their Merkaba activated learn about the star tetrahedron and how it works, and it is the eight-pointed star. It is uh, connected to the physical body, uh, connected to the third-dimensional body right in the original eight cells. So within the original eight cells, you'll find the very center of the star tetrahedron. And so this is the, the star tetrahedron is what is connected to our physical. And so that one must be functioning before you're working with all your other dimensional bodies. So the star tetrahedron is represented in, it's very hard to show, but if you were going to represent it, this is the, the seed of life. And so the star tetrahedron would be the seed. It's kind of looking at it as a feminine and a masculine aspect. I yes. Mean, and that's maybe feminine and masculine aren't necessarily the words, but the star tetrahedron is the straight line and the seed of life if it was in spherical form uh, like your like your first um, uh, like your first cells then that would be represented by the, the seed of the life seed there of life. And the so, two-dimensional object so what I would like to say about it is that this is what we learn as the Merkaba and this actually is only part of the code so there's more to it than this and so Understanding there was a talk today on the 64-pointed star, which looks very similar to this one, but but the difference is how many points it has. This one has the 64 points. So now this that looks like the Sri Yantra. Yes, yes. It's uh, the 64 tetrahedron grid, and the 64 tetrahedron grid. That's uh, what Nassim Haramein refers to it as. Uh, we f refer to it as Metatron's cube because it is uh, one of the geometries that we see in the Merkaba fields. Is the 64 pointed star uh, that is one of the Merkabas.
So when, when you get your Merkaba activated and you're working in the eight-pointed star, it's keeping you in this. It's keeping you limited in this space. But when you get your Merkaba upgrade and you are upgraded so that all of your, uh -huh. so that all of your tetra, so that all of your stars are spinning, then you have Metatron's cube. So this is the masculine, and if these were spheres, this would be the feminine version. And so this is also Metatron's cube. And what we are doing with the DNA activation and with the Merkaba upgrades is actually upgrading you from the eight-pointed star to essentially the 64-pointed star. In which we'll still have the eight-pointed star as long as we are here in this physical dimension, but you know, this these physical bodies. But this allows oh. us to travel throughout space and time across all dimension anywhere we want to go because of, because of the geometries. Activating your sacred geometry. Yes. The sacred geometry within you. It could freak some people out, entities and things. Can you share a little bit more about entities that people might have and, and how you recognize entities? I'd sure like to answer that uh, with my first experience in this is that uh, I, my, my family had noticed that my mannerisms and speech and stance had all changed. Um, and with that, uh, when we looked into that further, we found that uh, about 200 and some lifetimes ago, I was dying in the desert. I made a contract with a being who assisted me in staying alive at that time. So this contract that I made with another being, after that lifetime, we both, re we both incarnated into the same physical body time after time. And, um, two in one. Yes, well, two in one for a while, and then for a little while there was three of us in there. Um, and so you can have multiple contracts with multiple beings, and we just call them entities. You know, the, the jargon on all this stuff is not set, so entity does uh, bring up a connotation to it. Um, you can consider it as another being. And it's so, a good contract in the beginning. It's not yes. that it's something that's not for your greatest good. You obviously accepted the contract at some point. So there was a connection between the two of you. It's not that they're just taking something. In, in some lifetimes it was beneficial to both beings and sometimes it's beneficial to one or the other. This lifetime uh, for all of us is becoming non-beneficial to have these contracts because as we are raising a vibration whether we are conscious of it, aware of it, or even want it, it is happening. And so and then also with all the free will um, we are needing to release these guys because these can be like a soul aspect of another being and so we consider ourselves right here in this physical as one aspect of our soul. Well, this other being that is here with us in this contract is an aspect of another person's soul or another being. And so basically, um, releasing these contracts is a huge thing. That's something that we've been doing um, is releasing contracts, going soul to soul with a person and helping them to dissolve those contracts. And then that other being that resided with us would be taken to wherever's for their highest and greatest good and we do all this work with the guides. Um, and so those are the, the contracts that, uh, that we try to release. And sometimes there are entities that do not have contracts. You were talking about the entities and that is definitely a trigger word for people. You could just say that other beings that you allow to control. And the thing is, is that anybody can take that control back. Entities don't necessarily have to have a contract to mess with you. But when you are a free will sovereign being and you take control and stand in your power, there is nothing greater than you, and then it cannot affect you. And if you have those contracts, that's when you would want to do some work with the meditation and releasing the contracts. I love what you said there, that whole being and sovereignty is really what we need to do. Here we are at Contact in the Desert. I find it funny that you were in the desert when you had your soul contract. And I wonder why I'm here in the desert. It's too hot for us here. Talking about sovereignty, and here we are at Contact in the Desert. And that's really important for you to explain more on the sovereignty because even when we're talking about ETs and the malevolent and the benevolent ETs, it all comes back to sovereignty and your personal power. Well, and it is a time of free will because this is a free will universe and you hear that from all different kinds of sources. Um, that earth is set up for us to come here. We, we uh, forget what it is that we know. We forget our connection to, to source, to our higher soul self. 
and it's done on purpose so that we can come here and we can play and uh, not be impeded by by what we really know and so it is set up as a free will universe so that we can just learn and grow um, but right now at this time it's 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 moving on to a whole new new game for for all of humanity and for all those else in the universe um, so earth is a very important place for us to exercise our free will and as we have been um, hijacked on for lack of a better term on so many different levels whether it is uh, you know we do a lot of clearing with the ley lines um, we find that there's a lot of non-beneficial grids around the world that are taking energy from people, whether it's in the churches or in Masonic lodges or football stadiums, hospitals, museums, um, the sacred geometry that is non-beneficial that's set up within the city systems. Everything that is created in this physical world is created with measurements that do not produce healthful and beneficial frequencies. And so where we work with our tools that are based on cubit lengths of measure that produce beneficial frequencies, and that was all the forgotten knowledge right there. So we are intending that we're going to start creating these new meter sticks, so to speak, that produce the healthful and beneficial frequency in a straight line cubit. And if, as all of us are reconstructing our physical world and we are creating in these straight line cubits that produce beneficial frequencies, that too is going to free us up from this systems of control that we've all been under. And so that goes back to our sovereign free will that uh, we do have this free will, but so much layers have came across impeding us from, from being in that free will. The frequencies that we don't even know about. And so your tools and devices, they're made of copper. Can you speak about the properties of copper that assist you in this technology? Well, copper is a crystalline structure. So as, um, as a copper wire is created, it aligns all the crystals in a one-way flow of energy. And when you take that one-way flow of energy and you bend the wire in half and you twist it, uh, you cut it at very specific lengths, which are these cubit lengths, and they act like an antenna. So when you bring them back together, it's creating a counter-rotating vortex of this frequency. And so there used to be 64 known cubit lengths to mankind, and we've discovered probably about 19 of them. Uh, one of them comes from the King's Chamber that produces 144 megahertz tensor field. Um, but these, not all of them are creating a, t a tensor ring. Um, but when we do create these tensor fields, it restructures electromagnetics. Um, it also, the, the new rings that we are creating, they're called the galactic qubit. These were actually doused in by a couple of uh, dairy farmers in Wisconsin who are looking for a qubit length that would be most beneficial for their livestock. Well, we end up getting the galactic qubit which uh, these galactic qubits are the ones that the Council of Light works through. It's the ones that our higher soul self-consciousness works through. And so that's why we created these, uh, this particular machine here, uh, which is just all run off of tensor field technology uh, that is allowing uh, a setting a space in a place, raising our frequency and vibration, and allowing us to be able to connect with and work with these beings that are for our highest and greatest good. Tensor technology cannot be weaponized. You put your intentions into here, but it only sends out what is healthful and beneficial for the highest and greatest good. So, you can program it. yes, and that's because of the geometrical structures within uh, the spheres, the coils. Um, so basically, it's taking the tensor ring and it's just making the energy flow differently. Like these guys here produce a tube torus, a toroidal field, three quarters of a mile across. It restructure all electromagnetics. It uh, connects the two torus of your heart, of your brain, of your Merkaba field, amplifying and strengthening everything. Um, and then these guys here are just amplifying your intentions. I mean, I know a little 12-year-old girl who can move clouds. So my parents put their intentions into their sphere for allowing only beneficial weather. Their neighbors know us for the past three years, hailstorms go right around because it's just amplifying intentions. So it's basically training wheels for us to get past that side of our mind that says, wait, we can't do these things. We are Merkaba field, our intentions, we can do everything. We are very powerful beings. This uh, chamber that we've created is our intention that we are able to create these chambers. We would like to create multiple chambers that are housed permanently wherever it is that we go to do our work. 
So we want to have one of these chambers set up everywhere so that people can come along and freely use them. And so that is, is our intention. That's why we sell our tools and we have our studio is to be able to fund these endeavors that are raising the vibration across the globe. Consciously connecting lights. We're turning the lights on of all the beings. So as we get out in the public and we see people and talk with people, what we're really doing is connecting with them and saying, hello, it's time to wake up and let's turn your light on. Let's ground you, anchor you. Let's connect you to source. Let's give you all the tools you need. Now it's time to clean this place up. And these are, you hope to even put these into a mainstream level around hospitals and other places, shopping malls, things like that, anything that any listener can do to assist. A public place. Um, right now what we're looking for is, is funding to assist on this. So we're looking for people that can assist us with all those different uh, funding sites that are out there or that would just like to be a sponsor for this type of, of research and technology and because that is what we are here to do is, is we're here to help the collective not only on this earth but everywhere else throughout the universe and so basically what this chamber is going to do is it's going to allow us to all make it home in this lifetime instead of having to reincarnate several several times beautiful Melissa and Brian thank you thank you